Hi, I'm Holly Sizemore, Chief Mission Officer for Best Friends Animal Society. Welcome to Saving America's Pets. Last week, BG and I here talked about what to do when you find baby kittens outside. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about what to do to help orphaned and abandoned baby kittens with our special guest, Hannah Shaw, the Kitten Lady. It may surprise you to find out that two-thirds of the animals killed in U.S. shelters are cats. And sadly, neonatal kittens are the group most at risk of dying. In our last episode, we talked about what you can do when you find baby kittens outdoors. And for those of you who didn't catch the episode, the short answer is, is almost always you don't do anything, but wait and watch because the mama cat is almost always nearby. Today, we're going to talk about what we can do when orphan kittens truly do need intervention and our help. I know for me, when I bottle fed baby kittens, it's been really exciting to know that you're taking the tiniest, most fragile little guy, helping them to survive, and then watching them grow and thrive and turn into these little bouncy personalities that just make you laugh every second. Our special guest today to talk about orphan kittens is Hannah Shaw, otherwise known as the Kitten Lady. We're really lucky to have her because Hannah has dedicated over a decade of her life to helping individuals save the lives of the most fragile felines, bottle baby kittens. Hannah Shaw is not only a best-selling author, she's also founder of the nonprofit group Orphan Kitten Club. Welcome, Hannah. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. What made you become the kitten lady? Well, um, you know, I've been active in animal advocacy since I was a kid, but I never really understood issues that impacted kittens until I found one outside. About 11 years ago, I found uh, my first kitten of many to come in the future. And um, that was a really eye-opening experience for me. She was up in this treetop. I climbed the tree, got her down, and then quickly realized that there were not a lot of services to help her and that I was kind of on my own. Uh, I had to learn kind of just through trial and error how to care for an orphan kitten, um, you know, how to get her healthy and how to get her, um, you know, through weaning age. And, you know, ultimately that kitten became my cat Coco, who I still have, but it really opened my eyes to the volume of kittens out on the street and then also to sort of the lack of services available for them. Uh, so I became obsessed with helping these kittens that I would find outside. But additionally, I became really interested in creating educational resources over the years as I was learning and growing in my uh, awareness of kitten care, I wanted to share that with people. So the Kitten Lady Project um, is an advocacy and education project that really started um, through just me wanting to share what I know so that other people don't have to go through what I did where, you know, we don't really necessarily know the right thing to do when we find kittens and how to care for them. Um, I can say over the last 11 years, a lot has changed. Um, there's definitely way more foster programs now, more awareness about neonatal kitten issues. So um, now I really focus on helping people not just realize that these issues exist, but um, understand how to do the kitten care uh, to the best of their ability. Well, I think that 11 years of progress, we have a lot to thank uh, to you and, and the awareness that you have brought. You just do an amazing job at presenting the information in a thoughtful but easy to understand manner, but also with this attention to detail that's just so important when you're dealing with those little tiny ones, right? And recently you just, uh, presented a webinar series. Tell us a little more about that and, and why you produced that and what are some of the responses you've gotten from it? Sure. So one of my main things that I do uh, when I'm not living in a pandemic is I travel around the country and even internationally and I teach classes uh, to animal rescuers, to you know people who are interested in cats, to the veterinary community, the shelter community. And I teach people about kitten care, about community cat programs. Um, and so unfortunately, you know, the pandemic has had the impact of 
canceling all of my upcoming events. Uh, and so the webinar was really um, something that was born out of the realization that if I want to be able to continue doing classes, it has to move into a digital space. And the response actually is amazing because usually my classes are a couple hundred people, uh, which is fantastic. But the first webinar uh, that I did in the series had um, 65,000 people watching live, which wow. is more than I would ever be able to pack into like the biggest stadium that I know of. So I was like, how on earth are there tens of thousands of people watching a bottle baby lecture? I mean, this is amazing. So um, I taught this four part series. Uh, the first class is about bottle babies. The second is about sort of that growth age, pre-adoption age, weaning, how to find kittens a home. I did a webinar on keeping kittens healthy. And then I did one about those outdoor kitten scenarios. What do you do if you find a kitten outside and how do we help these little pissy spitty feral kitties? Uh, so it was a four part series, amazing attendance, really has got my mind now uh, thinking in the digital space of how can I create more um, educational resources that are widely accessible. And clearly the interest is there. Tens of thousands of people, that's so exciting. Community members, who clearly have an interest in helping. And I know you've been a strong advocate for community-centered solutions. And specifically when it comes to the really tiny babies, because as you and I both know, they're really at risk in a shelter setting. Tell us more about why that is. Why are the tiny little fragile ones uh, more at risk in a shelter setting? Sure. So I think uh, a lot of people, when they picture a kitten, they picture like this, you know, fluffy eight week old kitten sitting under the Christmas tree or something. And that's certainly one way of being a kitten. But before they can get to that healthy, adoptable age, they have to pass through the very vulnerable period of being a neonatal kitten. And um, due to a variety of issues, the biggest of which being we have a lot of kittens born outdoors. You know, these kittens come into shelters oftentimes without their moms. Mm -hmm. And shelters are not always set up, uh, or let me say it again, shelters are typically not set up to provide care to orphaned neonatal kittens. Uh, these kittens need around the clock bottle feeding. Uh, they need somebody to be there for them in the middle of the night. And, you know, I think it's helpful to remember that shelters have operating hours, just like any other facility. They're not necessarily there in the middle of the night. And so, um, unfortunately for many of these little guys like chickpea here who relies on bottle feeding, um, you know, chickpea would not have a positive outcome in um, a shelter setting unless there is either a nursery or a foster program. Um, and I can tell you there's really only around a dozen nurseries in the country uh, with more than 3,000 brick and mortar shelters. What you're looking at is most shelters relying very much on uh, foster, foster programs. So that's why Everything I do is trying to recruit fosters, trying to help um, organizations learn how to retain their fosters, have fosters have foster, make sure foster parents are having a good experience with fostering, make sure that they have the supplies they need, um, making sure that they have the education they need. Uh, I really try to attack that issue on all sides so that we have a, a really strong community of foster parents who really can do the work that's needed because. These issues can't be solved within the four walls of a shelter. You know, a shelter shouldn't be a building. A shelter should be a community. For community members who might want to foster a bottle baby, but they've never done it before, what is the one most important quick piece of advice you would give to them? Yeah, if you're interested in fostering bottle babies, right now is a great time to start. With so many of us staying at home, I think it's a great opportunity for us to really push ourselves and learn what we can do. Um, I think you, you, you learn what you can do by trying to do it. And you'll be amazed by how many lives you can save uh, by just learning some information. You can you know, watch uh, my videos to learn how to do the care. Uh, you can read my book to learn how to do the care. Uh, but don't, don't let fear stop you from getting involved. Um, you know, there are a lot of different paths into uh, fostering neonates. Um, certainly one of them is just diving in. Another thing that you can do is foster a mom and babies. That's such a great way to uh, learn about orphaned kitten care because uh, mom 
really shows you what to do. Uh, you can you can kind of care for mom, mom cares for babies, you supervise, and you know you build your skills over time. But you know we're all learning as we go, and I just encourage people if you want to start your journey, just start today. So if people would like to view your webinar series, where can they find that? And we can put it in the description as well. Sure. So the webinar recordings are all up at kittenlady.org slash webinar. Terrific. And these guys are, um, obviously, these guys are being uh, cared for through my nonprofit, which is Orphan Kitten Club. Oh, there they well, are. they are adorable. Chickpea and spinach. I love it. Oh, they're so squirmy. Sorry, guys. I know you just want to play. <laughs> Definitely healthy, happy kittens. Thanks to all the great work that you do with them. Thank you. Yes. Look at the belly on chickpea. Okay. That's a kissable belly right there. We call her thick pea. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Hannah, for all the work that you do to help the bottle babies and to help us be successful bottle baby foster parents. And many thanks to Chickpea and Spinach uh, for being thank with you. us today as well. They are very cute special guests. And you take care. <laughs> Keep up the great work. Thank you. You too. If you've taken care of orphan kittens, we'd love to hear about it. Send us your stories and pictures to Saving America's Pets at bestfriends.org. And please hit like and subscribe. And remember, together we can save them all.